up, War Report family? Your man, Ike Jones, here with another episode of Building Rapport. In with us today, we have recruit. Well, he's not a recruit anymore. He's committed to the squad. Mm. Our guy, Keontae Scott, who's going to be right. joining the defensive backfield. Keontae, how you doing today, sir? I'm doing good. How you guys doing? Hey, man, we are great, wonderful. Great, Key, I want to get it kicked off like this. Um you know, you are a guy that's on the West Coast out there, right? But you are going to be coming down to the South to play football in the SEC. Talk to us a little bit about your recruitment and what led you to the decision to say, I want to be an Auburn Tiger. Uh, I guess, I mean, this this whole recruiting process was definitely a blessing. I just want to give thanks to the man above for sure. It was um, just a blessing and opportunity, um, you know, um, my first year coming in, I just I handled my business and and just really trusted that you know everything would work out. And you know, game six came and I ended up getting my first offer. And then you you know you, it just started rolling. And then um, eventually Auburn came. I got Auburn in year two. So um, man, it was just blessing and just the the rapport I had with the coaches and just the relationship I built with Coach E and Coach Harson. Man, it was just, it was crazy. And then you know getting the invite to come up to the Iron Bowl. You know, such great expectations, and man, did the Iron Bowl live up to everything? And just, just sitting there, I just, it was to the point where I went on a lot of visits. I went, I went on five, and and I found myself just sitting there, like you know, not really like just on a visit, like just sitting. I had the coat on; it was cool, just sitting there, looking around, you know, seeing myself here. And nah, I just you know, I went to Auburn, and I had one of them pom pom things. I was. I was into it. It was, it was, I just felt it. And, and I think I committed personally in my head that day. I'm just seeing the iron bowl, even though, you know, we, we came up short, but just seeing the vibe and, and being around and just being around early. Cause I got there Friday. So I was able to see like the team's preparation and, and how just like everything went forward into it and just preparing for, I mean, that's the, I mean, that game is crazy, but I just feel like it's always like, I've, I've got a chance to actually watch a lot of games, you know, um, the streams on YouTube. And just this is always like that. It's just love. It's good love. Like, it's also like bad love, but it's good love. And the good love outweighs the bad love. So, I mean, just after that Iron Bowl, I, I ended up going on another visit. I took my last visit. And just on that visit, I just was like, I found myself again, like, uh, I don't know. And um, and I remember talking to myself, like, man, it's in the South. And, and man, it's super far. Man, it's in the SEC. Man, it's like, but I feel like. I mean, I got to the point where I just asked myself, what did I want from, you know, playing college ball? What did I, what was my dreams of, you know, what did I want, what did I want to accomplish out of playing ball? And I was like, okay, my goal is to eventually, you know, do hard work, make it to the NFL. So I was like, okay, out of my top five, what school puts me in the best opportunity to do that? I mean, a lot of, I mean, four people got X's and one, one person got a check mark and it was Auburn University and continued to just build that, you know, got a chance to see coach Etheridge face to face when he came to visit for the home visits and just talked. And it was always transparent. It was never, it was never, you know, a lot of the recruiting stuff you you get, you get a lot of like non-transparent stuff, like coaches telling you stuff, you know, it's all never bluff. What was, what was out was on the table. It was brought to me. It was, it was clean. It was every, it was no lies. It was all, it was all based and they put it on my, it was like, whatever, whatever happens when you come here, is up to you and that's exactly what i was looking for in a school just to tell me that i don't want to hear the, you know the all the other recruiting stuff just to get me but just tell me that i have opportunity to come do something different and that was presented so i mean i just felt like why not so um end up you know getting that selling that deal signing and man i i believe it was the best decision i ever made and i'm not even you know in senior auburn yet but i just feel it i just know so man i just can't wait i'm excited to get up and and just man get get it going again you know and be be a tiger officially awesome awesome so one of the things i gotta say that i like that you just said at the end of the iron bowl you said we came up short you are already thinking like oh, an yeah, auburn man sure. i love it i love that automatic <laughs> sure. war eagle man yes sir I yes can. sir let's talk about it all right key uh you mentioned zach etheridge uh who also played at auburn himself db who's now in coaching who had a hand in the role in recruiting you how would you describe that relationship since you've signed? What has the communication been like since you've signed uh, uh, on the dotted line to come to Auburn? Describe your relationship with Coach Etheridge. Like I like I said, you know, previously, like just 
with all the coaches on the coaching staff, but it, you know, um, Coach Etheridge just keep it he keeps it real. Like, and that that's something I think you get from a player turned to coach, but a player at the school you're trying to attend, coach. That's something you know a lot of schools don't have. He can tell you, you know, what the best food spot is. You know, he can tell you about, you know, what he went through. His, you know, the difference. He could tell you about being an Auburn man, a true Auburn man, and and that's something you get with the recruiting pitch he brings and and just being transparent and real he never he never um he never had to do the recruiting stuff i felt like it was always transparent and he he wanted the best for me and he's seen he's seen something in me that you know a lot of schools end up he's seen more he's, he went past that you know he he did a, he he went beyond and i mean that's something that i can i, I can thank him for and and, and, you know, as far as our communication now, it's, it's, it's the same. That's something you don't see a lot. You know what I'm saying? After, I feel like a lot of schools get, get to the point where they get you to sign that paper and then, you know, they're, they're, it's just, they got you. But, you know, our communication is the same as if I was still a recruit and, st- and he was still trying to get me to come, become, to go to Auburn. So that communication is the same. And um, it's the same for everyone on the coaching staff. It's just real good communication, just making sure I'm handling my business down making sure I get get up and make sure I'm prepared and, and ready to roll when, it, when the time comes. And that's just the communication right now. Well, let, let's talk a little bit about that preparation. What kind of things are you doing right now? I know that you are taking classes right now during the summer, but what kind of things are you doing to get yourself prepared um, mentally and even physically uh, to get ready for the upcoming fall season? Um, so just, I feel like I'm, I'm preparing myself a lot mental. A lot, a lot. It's a lot of mental that people don't really see that goes into the, this game we play. It's, it's a lot of mental. So I'm mentally preparing myself. Um, been going over defenses with my my DC back at Snow. Just learning, taking some more time to really learn the defenses. And also, just I watch the. You know, there's there's hour games, the two hour games on YouTube. I'm watching them. You know, just watching. The, you know, they're TV printed, so you don't get the the end zone view. And the, but I'm just watching the two hour games. I watch. I mean, I watch every game they play last year already. I've already broken it down. I've seen the bad stuff. I've seen the good stuff. Watched the Alabama game a couple times. I mean, that's just a game you, you know, a lot of things could have went right and a lot of things could have went wrong. And, you know, that's just the game we play. But just breaking those things down, but also, you know, just physically preparing myself. I understand, you know, I miss spring ball and, and I'll miss summer workouts. But just, just trying to be, just trying to just, you know, just trying to get a little glimpse of anything I got going on, just preparing myself. You know, my trainer understands my trainer um, was in the league and he understands, you know, uh, he he's, you know, went to college, played D1 ball. So he understands the, the opportunity. So we do we go two a days. We go um, weights in the morning, plyometrics at, um, in the afternoon and, you know, just on that schedule, still in between those, getting the classwork done. And then after the last session, just getting classwork done, eating, um, just trying to just eat healthy because I know that, that that's a big change and. You know, they're going to get you everything you need up there. So just trying to get ready for that, just mentally preparing myself. I feel like if I can mentally come in ready, then, you know, I feel like a lot of that, that next, that next jump is going to take a lot of mental, a lot of mental. So just preparing myself mentally to be in a spot where I have to, you know, I'm a little far behind and I have to work myself to, you know, get in, in even in between them. So just trying to work hard enough to just come. And it's just like, I just want it to be smooth. I want to land the plane to land and, no turbulence, just roll down, and then we, you know, we get right back up in the air. Just a quick stop, and then, you know, just being able to ready to get rolling. Awesome. Follow a question to that. Uh, what role has Auburn coaches kind of played in helping you with the transition? Uh, you talked about uh, working out. Uh, is has the strength and conditioning coach uh, has he given you things to work on in the summer to prepare you for what to expect when you get to Auburn? For sure. So I've definitely I've. I'm in block three, finishing block three of just the workouts. You know, I made it real, you know, that's something that was a super blessing. While I was at my JUCO committed, I was able to, you know, get get the workouts and being able to break them down. And, and, and that was my first sense of, okay, this is, you know, so that helped me mentally prepare even more. So being able to go through those, this is something that they're probably or have been through before, or this is the workouts they're doing, or this is the intensity you need or this is the intensity of the workout. So just getting those little glimpses and just adding them to my mental bag and just being able to um, prepare and go through those workouts. And then, you know, once I, I got to a point where I feel like I'm okay with the workout, it's still hard. It's still very hard, but mentally I'm not like, when I first started, it was like, man, this is like, I can't believe they're doing this, you know? And I had a couple of my boys doing the workouts with me and they were like, 
like this is like you know this is crazy but yeah just you know it's a super blessing to have like good coaches around me they made sure i got the workouts probably like i think i committed the next day i had an email on my workouts you know just okay. making sure i'm just prepared awesome. give me all the tools i need uh, it sounds awesome. It sounds like you are definitely locked in mentally uh, looking forward to seeing how that pays dividends in the fall. So let's talk and fast forward a little bit about um, when when are you expected to to touch down in Auburn and what kind of expectations do you have for yourself as far as um, trying to get up to speed? Are there things that you've already set as goals for yourself, not necessarily statistical goals, but just goals for yourself to get acclimated like where you want to be um, to start the season? I will. I will graduate on the 29th. I mean, sealed, sealed, signed, delivered, you know, AA in hand, all the requirements. So, I mean, I'm ready to roll and ready to get going, you know, the 30th. And um, I believe fall ball starts on the 1st, August 1st. So, I'm, you know, I'm the 30th. I'm ready to roll, be out there, and, um, and, and you know, I'm right into it. So that's why a, little of this, a lot of this stuff is real mental because it's going to take a lot of mentally to just be, you know, thrown in right in, you know, with the sharks. And um, mm -hmm. that's something I'm, I'm prepared for. I'm, I'm ready for it. I, I'm ready for the challenge. Um, and also just, uh, what was the second part of the question? Just what, what things are, do you have as expectations for yourself when you get ready to come down for fall uh, camp? Um, as far as expectations, I, I, I expect myself to just be in a position where I can help my team, you know, wherever, wherever that needs to be done. Um, that's a, that's a real expectation for me, whether that be, you know, wherever that is um i'm really mentally prepared and prepared to give the coaches you know just I, that's that's one thing i made clear like i just want to be able to prepare i understand you know with all the you know with all the the stuff we've been through i just want to be able to help the team any place needed so that's that's kind of my goal and my expectation and my expectation is also to to not have really mental breakdowns and, and mental problems i want everything if, if, if it's anything it's a physical problem and that's something that can be changed but i feel like mentally you got to be strong enough to where nothing mentally affects you you know it's going to be hard it's going to be you know it's going to be this and that and not something i don't want to happen so that's really my focus and my expectation my expectation is you know help us you know, walk out victorious no matter where that is key we asked you about kind of what has been the communication uh with the coaching staff uh trainers and the like but what has been the communication between you and teammates and we've seen other recruits talk to current uh, fellow recruits or future or current players. Uh, what has been the communication with your position group? Has there been any, do you guys keep in touch? What has that been like? So I definitely think it's a thing like, you know, for sure after I committed and it was, it was signed and so delivered then you know, all those guys made it clear, like, Hey man, you know, you're on board. That's one thing I'm super grateful for too. A lot of players like, and especially in my position group, like, Sam and Zion, like players like that just came and, you know, and it's, it's definitely more like the whole team OP, you know, all just made it clear that, you know, you're, you're on board now. So handle your business and, and get here. So we, you know, we all have one goal and they understand that I know that goal. So that's something that's just transparent between us. And man, the, my boys, like we locked in now. So it's like, you know, we're eagle. Like, we all here. All right. So, um, it's clear that you have a, a mentality about the team, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how that transpires uh, going forward. Um, are there any um, professional athletes, professional players that you look at and you say, this is the kind of player that I want to mold myself after or someone that your play style you feel like mirrors? Um, for sure. So I, I watch a lot of different guys because at the end of the day, there's some, there's some place I want to be. So I make sure I, I, I watch um, a lot of guys. I never I – never, try to focus on one player. I try to watch a lot of people and watch what they did and watch how they, what they, what they're doing now currently. And, and also, but just want to make one, one person I want to mold my game by is definitely Jalen Ramsey and how versatile he is and how his coaches can say right now, Hey, we need him shut down. And Jalen Ramsey has no problem with whether he goes in the slot, whether he, you know, tight in, you know what I'm saying? Just, I just want to be like that. Jalen Ramsey has a role where he's that guy on defense and he's going to guard that guy on offense. So that's just kind of how I want my game, just the confidence he plays with. He might get, you know, he might get a ball caught on him, but he's still confident. He's still, he's still going to be able, he's going to shake it off and, and keep it going. So that's just something I look up. Just his mental, he wins, he wins reps mentally. And that's just how, how I try to be. Like, I want to win the rep before the rep even started. Just mentally prepared to win. So that, that's someone I definitely look after, Jalen Ramsey, just versatile. Like, when I seen him get put in the slot this year, 
instantly told my coaches, hey, I got to get in the nickel. Like, <laughs> I got went in the nickel, and it's something that, you know, just helps you, you know, just sell yourself. And definitely was a great idea. Just getting that taste of garden wideouts and garden slots at the same time was something a lot of people don't have and the ability to do for sure. So let, let me follow up with that. Jalen Ramsey is a guy who is known for how much he talks on the field. Is Keontae Scott a chirper? Are you going to be out there talking noise or are you just like, nah, I let my pads talk? Like what, what kind of guy are you out there? So, you know, like, like I've been saying the whole time, just mentally, like, I mean, I'm not necessarily going to say anything. I'm just going to make a play and then make another play and then make another play and get to the point where it's like, okay, he doesn't have to say nothing. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I never want to get to a point where I feel like I have to defend my play. Like you just see, like okay, oh, he, you're not that good. Made a, made a tackle, PBU, got a pick. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, what can you say to that person? What can you yeah. say to that player? You can't say nothing to him. So that's just the game. That's the game I want to play. I want to make people not want to say nothing to me. They just, they just don't want to say anything. They don't, they don't want to make me any type of angry. They don't want to try to say I'm not gonna do something. Cause I just want to continue to just, I, I'm more of a let my past talk. Like, I'm not going to say nothing. I mean, if it gets to a point where you're just getting like, it's just, I'm making plays and you still have something to say, then that's something we can just talk about. Like, Hey bro, like what's going on? Like, are you okay? Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, what's going on? Like, like, holler at me for real. Like, like what's going on? But I never want to get to a point where I feel like I have to defend myself. I'm just going to let my game speak for itself and, and in and out, and, you know? And at the end of the day, you 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 never you never got an argument with a person that wasn't talking back to you. So I just want to keep that clean because I feel like a lot of people get into like those little arguments and they're not mentally like they're not they just get out of their game plan. And I want to always be in my game plan, so I don't want to get in too much of that. So I'm just gonna play ball and just make plays, and, and it's gonna get to a point where you don't want to say nothing to me at all. He's like, man, what's wrong with you, dude? Your girl leave you? Yeah, like, like, you what's, like, what's going on? <laughs> let's, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's, let's have a conversation. There's got to be something. There's got to be something. What's else. really good with you? Is your home yeah, life like, okay yeah. right now? Don't at me, bro. Like, <laughs> you flunking? Yeah, it's got to be right. something. <laughs> so so key, I, I gotta I gotta ask because you you came in highly touted. Uh people raved about what you what you did out west. Uh but fans haven't had a chance to see you yet. What can people expect when Keontae Scott touches the field and takes the field? Are you an aggressive QB? Do you take risks? Uh, are you just nice in coverage? Are you one on one? Are you a lockdown? What kind of what kind of defender is Keontae Scott? A consistent one, I would say. Just consistent. That, that's what you're gonna get from me. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna try my best, and I'm gonna be. That's my goal. And my goal is to be consistent. I wanna. I wanna make a play. And like I said, make another one. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people can make, everyone can make plays. I'm trying to separate my, I'm trying to separate myself by making plays and making more plays. And at the end of the day, people are going to, people are going to love Keontae because they know if they go that way, I don't have to worry about that. You know what I mean? I just want, I just want to have the fans just get trust in me. And not necessarily for me, but just trusting myself and trusting my teammates. My teammates trust me. They know, okay, Keontae got it. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's very important that everyone on the field is trusting each other because that makes the best football team. And trusting the coaches trust you, fans trust you, and everyone trusts you, then you're doing your job right. And I, at the end of the day, I want to be able to do my job and just, you know, just give the fans that, okay. As soon as they're like, you know when Steph Curry shoots a three and everyone stand up, he ain't it. the ball ain't even went in yet. They just standing up already. I don't want they they see the ball in there. I want everyone standing up like just that time, like it, it, they know what's going on. Something exciting is about to happen. I definitely like to bring excitement to the game. Excitement, something something's gonna happen if it comes my way. Something exciting. Awesome. So, I mean, you're, you're describing a guy who just recently got drafted from Auburn by the name of Roger McCreary. Um, have you had an opportunity to talk to him at all in, during this process? That's my guy. My guy for sure. Definitely. As soon as I got there, like I. I feel like sometimes you could just you feel it. I just knew, like I knew, I didn't, like I didn't know until Coach E told me, and, and Roger was talking about it, and he was like, "Oh yeah, you know, I should be should be going this year." And I was just like, "Man!" And then you know, you get in your hotel room, and you know, you don't want to, you don't want to be fanboy, but I definitely got a chance to watch the tape and 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 the game plan. I was I was sitting there, and they literally said, "Roger, you're guarding Jamo, like you're guarding Jameis Williams, like all game, no matter where he goes." And just to see it live and see Roger handle his business, that's something I want to be able to do. Because that takes time. You don't just do that. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's something he proved to the fans, to the coaches, to his teammates. 
they trust they like okay roger roger got it and that's that's exactly what i want to get at so roger is definitely like a mentor to me now i mean we that's just he's just bro want to want to do is i want to leave his footprint want to definitely leave his footprint he left probably a little bigger one you know a little bigger one so so key you you talked about being mentally focused you talked about consistency and and being tough it sounds like you've described the personality of the head football coach at Auburn. Talk to us about Brian Harson and the impression he's made on you. Um, man, I I, I don't even like words. Ex- this I just I don't even I don't even know how to explain it. But I just know, as far as Coach Harson, like Coach Harson forces you to be the best at all times because he if you're the best, then you're making someone else better, and if you're making someone else better, then they're making. He just wants everyone to be better. And, and that's how he lives his life, and that's how he goes about it, and that's how he coaches. He coaches like you want you to be the best. So it's like every you start seeing and you start feeling like you're, you know, you just want to do better around, and that's that's how you know you're a great head coach when you're inspiring everyone around you. Like he pushes, I'm pretty sure he pushes the coaches to do better, and that's just something I I got from him just verbally. Like he he's gonna be on you because he he just sees he sees potential in everyone, and he's transparent. He's never gonna sell you short. He's never. You want to come talk to him? You can come talk to him. He's give you real answers. He gave me real recruiter answers. I asked him questions, and he answered the questions honestly. He didn't. He didn't sugarcoat it. He told me what it was, and it's still been the same. That's how I know it was real. And I've been knew it was real before I even got a chance to test it out. I knew I was at the right place because he told me. He literally shot and told me. He's like, if you want, well, I see what you can do. He's like. I know what you can do. He's like, it's the point where where you want to do it at. He's like, this is the great platform for you. I definitely believe that if you're doing it here, you definitely have a shot to change your family's lives. And I said, okay, coach. Like, you know, I that's something I can rock with. You know, that's something I can believe, and I just can't wait to get up there and get under that, get under his wing, and just just soak it all up because he definitely has something to offer to everyone. And um, I just can't wait to get under it. All right, Key, I'm I'm, I'm gonna move away from football for just a second here before we get out of here. I just want to talk about culture change, right? So you are going to be coming to the South, right? Like it's, it's a different kind of heat out here. It's a different kind of culture. It's a different, what is the one thing that you feel like is going to be the biggest adjustment for you as far as moving to Alabama, small town, Auburn, Alabama. I know you were in a small town at community college, but that's still different because you got wet. (laughs) Sure. Auburn, Alabama, what do you feel like is going to be the biggest culture change for you? And what's the thing that you're looking forward to the most about coming down south? Um, so I'm answer the good first. I think I'm I'm just ready to be in a football loving state. Like just being out there, you can see it, you can feel it, you can you know, you know exactly like everyone around you, like it's just love and it's just like football. Like that's something that you a football player dreams about being in a spot like Auburn because Everyone around you dreams, eats, sleeps football. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's football. It's a game. Oh, we're there. You know what I'm saying? It's not like yeah. there's no option. It's like everyone wants to be around football, and it's something that's definitely something great. But also, man, I'm excited for the food. I mean, I, <laughs> solid, I mean that's something you can't, like, like when I was, like, every time I've been to Auburn, like, on my visit, it's just been like, bro, like, the food is just crazy. And it's just really just tasted everything is fire <laughs> you feel me the fresh the fish tastes fresh like 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 they just got it out the water like it's <laughs> so i'm definitely looking forward to the food as far as like the bad thing uh, culture wise it's just you know i mean i guess every recruit thing when you go super far away just being far away from home just adjusting just like how long it's going to take me to adjust i definitely think it will be fast but just like adjusting to the culture adjusting to the way um you know, people people move and people live and, and just adjusting to that. And then, um, you know, I'm going to try not to pick on to the accent, but I don't know how long I'm going to be able to resist. But <laughs> that's the main goal. I'm trying not to get it. I'm trying not to come home the next time I come home. I'm trying not to have the accent. But we're going to see how far yeah, That's That's going to be difficult. I'm going to just yeah. let you know that off the top because you're going to hear <laughs> yeah, it all know, day, every good. day. All right. Well, Keontae, that's all we got for you today, man. I appreciate you being candid and giving us a little bit of your time. I'm definitely, again, looking forward to your time coming down here to the Plains. Um, listen, War Report family, we, we had a good time talking to Keontae. If you want more content like this, you need to be hitting like and subscribe on our channel. You also need to be following us on all of our social media. We are at The War Report on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TW Report on TikTok. 
That's it for another great edition of Building Rapport. Until next time, and as always, War Eagle. War Eagle.